goals tonight is to spotlight the differences and similarity between U.S. and Japan. And now Kazuko Ito is going to talk about the situation in Japan. So, just Hi, um, actually, I, I'd like to say thank you very much for your two remarkable speakers. Nancy and Jennifer, you know, I was so overwhelmed by the, you know, you know true stories. And uh, I'm a human rights lawyer. I'm out of the circle of the sport. And then so I was just very overwhelmed by the truth. So thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, so let me explain a little bit about the, you know, uh, the uh, motivation of today. So Olymp uh, as as the sun says, uh, Tokyo Olympic is uploading, it is 500 days, yes. And then so uh, we need to talk about the human rights and the Olympic. That is that's something really missing in the discussion in the 2020 Olympic game. So that's why uh, this um, um, event is talk about the human rights, especially uh, women's rights and the Olympic. So I'm really happy to have two speakers and highlight the issues. Yeah. So um, Japan is going to uh, host the Olympic game and the human rights record in Japan will be scrutinized uh, by the international community. So what uh, the Japan is uh, preparing for is that, uh, for instance, the Tokyo municipal government enacted regulation to prohibit the hate speech and discrimination against the disability people and the discrimination based on the uh, sexual orientation and the gender, gender identity. However, the, you know, what's happening on the ground, especially within the sports, that's the related to these things. So human rights is not the center of the sport in Japan as in the United States, maybe. Yeah. The physical violence has been prevailing in the sports, training in the school, Although the corporate punishment is prohibited uh, in the school under the law, the corporate punishment has been in common in the sports or club in Japan. And coaches and teachers are dominant in the training and students hardly resist. And such environment causes a lot of human rights violation in the school sports. For instance, look at this. This is introduced in every school, compulsory education, elementary school. Uh, you know, in that uh, every year Japan, have, you know, uh, the school has a you know sports festival, and then uh, you know the elementary school children are forced to do this human pyramid. This is seven meter high. Yes, and then you know there is no safeguard security, um, and sometimes, you know, uh, this is, a, uh, you know, you can go to the, you know, YouTube on this, and then this, what happened after this is, this corrupts, and fall down everybody, and many children are got injured. Yeah. And actually, uh, you know, this practice has been embraced uh, over, you know, three decades, and many children just die by this accident, but it never stopped. Yeah, that's happening in the school system. And then uh, sexual harassment, regarding the sexual harassment, you know, as a, this is very shameful remark by as a, our finance minister last year, very last year. So there was a scandal uh, in the fine advice uh, Financial minister conducts the sexual harassment against a reporter last year. And in response to that, the finance minister said uh, in the press conference that the sexual harassment is not a crime in Japan. He was like proud of that. <laughs> he just, you know, he just defends, uh, you know, his minor and saying something like that. That's a, you know, a prevailing culture are related to sexual harassment in Japan. And the next thing is that, uh, you know, uh, she talk, uh, Nancy talked a lot about the Title IX. Yeah, but uh, there's no Title IX, like, you know, uh, legislation in Japan at all. Uh, this is a photo about, the, the, you know, uh, the discrimination in the school system in Japan. 
very last year, so it was revealed in the medical university discriminated female applicant in the entry exam. Yeah, and, but that should not happen, but that happened last year. So because we don't really have as the equality of the law and the law of the women and uh, men. So that happened in Japan. And the next thing is that sports and harassment. Uh, unfortunately, uh, sexual harassment uh, in sports has been rarely revealed in Japan. Yeah. So nobody is raised boys, nobody is pick up. That's the situation. It's quite similar uh, to the situation in the United States. Uh, this case is, uh, however, tips of iceberg that happened uh, in September 2011. A judo coach and gold medalist of the Olympic game, Mr. Uchishiba, a conductive sexual assault against a 90 years old of female student after getting her drunk during the training camp. So uh, in the training camp, often a sexual abuse and physical violence happened. This is quite common in the Japanese top sports. And then though he alleged there was a consent, uh, he was arrested and found guilty. That was, uh, you know, for the uh, victim survivor's perspective, a uh, very successful case. But I know only one case, and that was accountability. And in judo, next uh, scandal happened, and in 2013, a 15 female judo athlete uh, within the Olympic national team in Japan claimed that um, they were subjected to violence, harassment, and humiliation during the training camp. And then uh, this was, you know, uh, the letter submitted uh, to the association. But the association didn't do much. So, you know, they opened up the case, and he hired, they hired the lawyer, and uh, hired a lawyer opened up the case to the press. And ultimately, uh, the court resigned, and all judo, uh, uh, Japan Judo Fight Foundation uh, set up the investigative committee and declared uh, elimination of violence. But uh, it's a very, very basic thing. But, uh, you know, uh, this uh, foundation, federation, you know, uh, just um, declares elimination of violence in 2013. That's the situation. But it took a lot of, you know, effort to get this result. Uh, you know, uh, in addition to that, so 15, uh, you know, female athletes were not open and uh, disclose their names. And some, you know, uh, the, the top top sports association members said, why they don't disclose their names? Yeah. And the coach is going to lose their job. It's a serious thing. But 15 athletes never told their name. That's not fair. That's a tall by uh, the, you know, within the circle of the committee in Japan. But that was female yeah. committee member that happened. And then after that, uh, you know, since last year, Me Too movement come into Japan as well. I'm not really sure what's related to that, uh, you know, Me Too movement in Japan. And then scandals happening in 2018. But in 2018, there was a lots of scandals happened in the sport in Japan. For well, instance, in May, the, the Nippon University um, American, American football player put an illegal hit on the quarterback of the rival university during the league game. And then, you know, as a, the victim, survivor of the rival team, you know, reported the case to the police. And everybody blamed that the you know, student that hit to the you know, survivors. But uh, actually, as a student, you know, held a press conference. That's a good thing. And he said he was ordered by the coach to tackle illegally. Yeah, coach orders 
and the fresh driver. That was sad. But, you know, uh, enough, you know, okay. Until he made a press conference, nobody cared, but they are behind yeah. the company. And then even after the press conference, the management denied the responsibility. But after that, some you know, governmental committee you know, has uh, come into the situation and found that the responsibility of the management of the university. That we tend to accept other, you know, other behavior like this, uh, behavior and conduct, which might constitute a sexual harassment or parallel harassment. Yeah, that's also very common. And most of the sports associations do not have guideline or internal rule to, you know, do not that you know sexual harassment or do not do any you know physical violence, yes, at all. Yeah. So response of the government happened because a lot of hard things happened in 2008. So then in December 2018, the Japan Sports Agency. Uh, which is a uh, part of the government, released this policy responding to the scandal, and it decided to establish the governance code in spring 2019, and JOC, and uh, Japan Olympic Committee, and Japan Sports Association, and the Para Sports Association will review the implementation of the code every four years. Every four years is not really enough. Huh? And the committee, comprised by uh, the, the, the sports association, uh, will uh, facilitate the improvement of the status and uh, the status of the situation under remediation. I think that very very tiny steps. Yeah, but uh, you know, I think that uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> if you wanted to say something, yeah, yeah. just real quick. Yeah. Who so when, if an athlete has a complaint, do they go to this, the committee comprised by sport associations? Is that who they go to to complain? Yeah. Okay, in the U.S., those, they're all friends. That would never work. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. I understand. So my time is running up, and so but I, I wanted to say something. Uh, so, yeah. So at the, at the, uh, let me uh, explain a little bit the, the background of the media movement in Japan. So in Japan, if anybody says something about that me too, you know, uh, raise a voice, they got a lot of backlash. That's not uh, common. That, that's not only sports, but also everywhere. In the school, in the working place, etc. So if silence breakers speak out her experience, uh, she'll be the one who is blamed by the society. You know, you are the guilty one who dress like that. You know, uh, who, you are the free guilty one who going to break with a mom. Yeah, that's happening. And society rarely blame as perpetrators. Society rarely question the social, social norm which comes on the sexual violence and harassment. Yeah. And so huge impunity over the sexual harassment in general. That's caused a lot of problems. And women's behavior, this is a call of the NHK. So today we welcome the NHK over there. Uh, according to the NHK call, and the women's behavior, that is deemed as a sexual concept. This is you know, a survey conducted by uh, four men in Japan. Look like that. And uh, if uh, women you know, have dinner with a man, 11% of men think, you know, we have a concept. And then, you know, we have a car with man, 25%. And the significant thing is, if women get drunk, and 34% of the men think there is a concept. How do you think about that? Yeah. So in this case, it's really difficult to get accountability of the sexual harassment, the sex crime in reality. And then that's why, you know, according to the statistics in 2014, and among the women experienced a sexual assault, uh, you know, around 70% of women are never consulted with anybody. 
only 4.3% on sentence consulted with police. But even if you know, <coughs> she go to police, maybe as she cannot win the case on most of most of the time. And the prosecution rate of the rape crime recently is thirty percent. Only thirty percent of the case could be prosecuted. Yeah. So Japan's uh, rape law, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, gives a heavy, heavy burden for the women. That's the problem. And also in the, you know, in the sports case, uh, in the sports hierarchy, young female athletes are extremely vulnerable position, and it's extremely difficult to raise their voices. That's the problem I see. So my recommendation is that. Um, Increasing number of female leaders in the sports associations and establish the independent and effective grievance mechanism which can accept the claim, investigate the fact, and make recommendations and remediation. So, like a US system. And the legal reform of the sex crime law, as you know, Nancy recommended. So, if there's, you know, the person who has power and the use of power, misuse of power, you know, we can't question the concept, right? We need to introduce such kind of law. And also, I think I really, you know, hope that the, you know, upcoming uh, June, there's the ILO, you know, annual conference, and then they discuss the new treaty about the sexual harassment. And then Japan is actually resistance to ratify this new ILO treaty regarding sexual harassment. This is quite shameful. So we really recommend and urge Japan to ratify the new ILO treaty regarding uh, the sexual harassment. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, three panelists. Now we are going to